This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Our week of 15,000 sports wraps up this week on Covering the Spread because we have covered NBA, NHL, UFC, PGA, NASCAR, NFL, all in the same week. So why not finish things off with one more sport because we're going to talk some English English Premier League this weekend by bringing on Austin Cass, breaking down his soccer betting process, breaking down the futures market, and some matches he likes for this weekend. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Join here as mentioned by Austin Cass. Check him out on Twitter at Austin Cass. Find his work uh, covering the EPL, but also doing NBA props and stuff like that over on numberfire.com. Austin, uh, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing great. Last time we had you on was in the thick of the World Cup, so slightly different stakes, but it sounds like things in the EPL are pretty fun right now, so it seems like it's a, it's a nice time to to check back in with this this world. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good time to to jump back in. And we'll be doing that today. Like I said, talking about the futures market. We'll talk about some matches. And if you are transitioning to betting some EPL with time opening up here at the NFL, we'll talk about the process Austin goes through as well in case you want to formulate your own process but don't know where to start with that we'll break all that down in just one second but first a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering this spread wherever you get your podcasts our first look at super bowl 57 is up that was up on monday breaking down the markets there what my number said we talked about some usc with austin swain yesterday uh, they, there is a timestamp for that in the episode description. If you want to skip past yesterday's NBA discussion and get to that. And then also I broke down what my models are saying about the clash in NASCAR this weekend. Uh, timestamp for that is also there. So if you want to skip ahead to those, look for the Thursday show, find those there. Uh, and then also while you're there, hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Get a piece of $10 million in bonus bets with FanDuel's Kick of Destiny. All you have to do is bet $5 on Super Bowl 57. And if Rob Gronkowski kicks a field goal live during the game, you'll get a piece of $10 million in bonus bets. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account. Gronk kick, you win. It's as simple as that. So don't miss out on the kick of destiny on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. To just place any $5 bet on the Super Bowl to get a piece of the kick of destiny. Again, $10 million in bonus bets. Tune in live during the game to see Gronk's kick of destiny. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus in select states. Minimum $5 wager required. Award may vary. Minimum is $5. Projected max $20. Bonus award issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. All participants are eligible for bonus award. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, gsgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. And in New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY to get your assistance. Now, before I take a look at the matches this weekend, Austin, Let's take a look at the futures market because right now Arsenal is, I don't want to say R, I'm not doing that. Arsenal is, I, I can't, it just sounds too weird. Arsenal is minus 150 to win a FanDuel Sportsbook. Man City is at plus 120. So A, educate me. Are there ties? Can you tie in this market or no? No, you can't. No. Okay, sad. This, well, this, all right. Either one of those two is going to win the league and that's who wins the bet. Okay, so is there any value for you in that market right now with that being the caveat there? Yeah, it's a really intriguing market. I like futures markets in general in all sports. Um, 
but for this one, I really like Man City at plus 120. Um, Arsenal have been a really big surprise this season. They weren't even a favorite to get in the top four. So uh, Liverpool was the team that was supposed to challenge Man City. So it took a while for the betting market to actually make Arsenal the title favorites, even though through 19 matches, they've won 16, drawn twice, and only lost one time. And then their one defeat, they actually played really well. So this just flipped about three weeks ago to where Arsenal are now the favorites, and they're five points clear at the top of the table, and they have a game in hand, which means they just played one fewer game than Man City. But Arsenal and City have yet to face each other, so they'll play each other twice, which could be a six-point swing if somebody wins both of those. And the first of those matches comes up on February 15th. So I think if you have a strong feeling about this market, which I do in in Man City, then the time to bet it is before that game on the 15th. So by FB refs expected goals model, City have been the better team. Despite the five-point gap, City has 4.1 more expected goals, and they've given up 4.1 fewer. And that's with Arsenal playing what I would say is at their absolute peak so far, and while City have been a little bit underwhelming. Uh, City's XG per 90 is 1.29, and it was 1.86 last year. So there's a lot of room for them to play better than what they've been playing, and I think they're probably going to get back closer to that level. And if City are able to get a win in that February 15th game, I think this market's going to flip back to City being the favored team. So I want to bet them before that match. So you mentioned that Man City's expected goals this year is down from last year. So you're expecting them to improve from where they've been thus far. But expected goals is already like an advanced metric that can hit regression in another way. You're expecting that number to regress. So when you're looking at that and trying to analyze, okay, I think this team could improve in this advanced metric. What are you using to decide that? Is it just kind of like knowledge of the players, intuition? You know, what, what goes into deciding that for you? Some of it is that, um, Mm -hmm. but most of it is looking at what they've done in previous years. Mm -hmm. It's not always perfect, but Man City has a lot of the same players, arguably some better players with Erling Holland now than they've had in previous years. So I don't know what the reason is that they've been playing poorly. Their coach, Pep Guardiola, seems to think they're just really content. They've won the league four times in the last five years. And there's really only been a few games this year where they've looked like Man City usually looks like and one of those was the second half of the game against Tottenham where if they lost they would have been in a really big hole in the league and it seemed like they kind of flipped the switch so maybe I'm guilty of underrating Arsenal a little bit and just thinking that Man City are going to be able to turn it on but I do think that's what's going to happen uh with Holland having scored like 60,000 goals how is their xg not higher that's my main question yeah I mean sports are so crazy especially (laughs) And soccer is like a low event sport with just a ton of variance. And, yeah. you know, Holland's probably going to win the player of the year in the league and break the record for goals. And they're going to score less points and less <laughs> goals than they did last year. Like, it just doesn't make any sense, really. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. So Austin's in on Man City. They're plus 120, as he mentioned, over at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. And I think the key thing is you mentioned the inflection point with that first match between them coming up here. uh, February 15th is that. So if you want to get in on Man City, if you agree with the analysis around they're going to improve, you want to buy in, that's the time you want to make sure you do so before then to get in before that match occurs. Now, back when we had you on during the World Cup, Austin, we talked about your process for betting this. And you kind of alluded to aspects of your process when talking about the futures market but for people who didn't listen then maybe want to get into betting soccer betting the epl what does your process look like for betting soccer what data are you looking at before you place a bet um i really like fb refs expected goals model which i referenced earlier there's a bunch of them out there they're all pretty good but they're all just like a little bit different and i found theirs to be the most accurate um but if i'm gonna bet like a team centric bet on a, on a soccer match, it's probably going to be a live bet. I think the mm-hmm. pre-match lines are super sharp as they are like in all sports. So my favorite way to bet soccer would be if I like, let's say Tottenham before a game, but I don't love their pre-match odds, maybe just wait till 20 minutes into the game and see what's going on. That can obviously backfire if they score early and that window is going to be gone. But if it's still 0-0, zero, zero, sometimes you can get them at the number you maybe thought they should have been at before the game. So that's what I like to do. And I also like the correct score market. So 
I'll give an example from this weekend. Um, there's just a lot more bang for your buck in that market. Arsenal are minus 250 to win at Everton, so that's a huge number to swallow. But they're plus 550 to win 1-0 and plus 500 to win 2-0. So I'd, I'd much rather take a shot on one of those than swallow that 250 number. Now, when you're talking about the expected goals number from FB Ref, um, how are you applying that? Are you just comparing, like, Team A versus Team B, looking at their expected goals, seeing which one is higher? You know, what? how do you implement that number in making a bet? Yeah, so, you know, obviously the betting markets have their own models that probably include expected goals. Sure. Um, I really weigh heavily a team's recent form, their last mm-hmm. five games, how they've how they've played and what their expected goals allowed and then uh, scored. And then same thing for the other side. So sometimes I think there's a team that's maybe in a poor run of form then that isn't fully accounted for in the market. But like I said, the pre-match lines are usually really good for soccer. Yeah. And it's a, a market everyone is betting into internationally. There's a lot of money in it. So it makes sense that be a very efficient market. And I understand why you go that way. And I think the advantage of taking a live betting approach. I don't tend to do it myself personally because I don't have a model for it. So it's hard for me to like, I want to know that I have value before I bet something. But I think the advantage there is you mentioned, okay, you like Tottenham. Let's say they score early and erase a bet. Like, yes, you are missing out on a bet, but you're not making a bad bet. And I think that like, I'd rather miss out on a good bet than make a bad bet. That's just kind of my personal preference. I would much rather, I want, again, I've said this before, but I want my null hypothesis going in to be that I'm not going to make a bet and then convince me that I should. And when you're do- taking the live betting approach, yes, you're going to miss out on some. But if you can get a better value later on, I think that is a worthwhile trade off. You will make fewer bets, but that's never a bad thing if the bets you actually make are better. So I think that that's kind of, and like honestly, like if, if you're watching the game and Tottenham looks like trash, just don't bet yeah. it. You know, I think yeah. that that's the other advantage is you can kind of, I think, make you can of av- it's easier to avoid bad bets if you are trying to avoid the super efficient market. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. And one of the unique things about betting soccer live is that when there is a goal, like that one thing obviously is going to swing the odds so big. And that doesn't really happen in basketball or football, right. even like a pick six or something. It's not right. going to swing it crazy. But in soccer, a team can go from like plus 120 to like minus 600, right. you know, depending on when that goal is in the game. And it, yeah, it can be really crazy. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I like that approach for sure. Now, you mentioned uh, the exact score markets. Uh, that's one route you can take if you want to avoid the hyper efficient markets. Uh, do you do player props or like other stuff with these matches? Or is it primarily live betting um, the, you know, the exact score markets and stuff like that? It's I'm I'm a huge fan of the props for soccer and they offer just so many options. Mm-hmm. But my well, some of the more popular ones are you can bet on players to take a shot, how many shots they'll get on goal, or uh, or sorry, players to score a goal and shots on target. And shots a shot on target technically is a shot that's either a goal or that gets saved by the goalie. Okay. So a shot that hits the post is technically not a shot on target. But my go-to bets are on a player to score or assist and then a player to be shown a card, either a yellow or a red card. If it's, if it's a match where one of the sides is a big underdog, I like targeting defensive midfielders to get carded because that position can sometimes get put in like compromised spots if they're just under siege the whole game and either make one bad foul to get a card or you can get a card from just an accumulation of fouls. So that's that's something I like to do a lot. And then <clears throat> the goal or assist, you know, if I really like a player X to, you know, to score a goal, I'm not going to get as good of odds with his goal or assist as I would as him to score a goal, but goals can just be super random. So if I feel good about a team creating a lot of chances right. and then one of their focal points, I'll just take him to, to get a goal or an assist. Okay, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, if you want to find that one, it's under the assist market, at least on FanDuel. And then I believe you can also get it under the goals, uh, the goals tab. Yep. So you a couple then, different routes for finding it. The, sometimes it's just under the popular tab too, like the first yeah. tab that puts you on. Yeah, so you got a couple routes of finding that if you are looking for those uh, when you are looking at the matches for this week. Speaking of which, let's do exactly that. Now, there is a match here on Friday. We're talking pretty close to that. So we'll ignore that one for right now. But... 
Pretty good offerings on both uh, Saturday and Sunday. Seven matches Saturday. We'll talk about Sunday here in a second. But when you look at the Saturday matches, Austin, any bets you like in those matches? Um, my favorite bet comes from the Brighton Bournemouth match, which takes place at 10 Eastern uh, tomorrow morning. I like Bournemouth to get shut out, which is priced at minus 110. <laughs> now, that's not what you, it's not a hard sell on getting somebody to watch a game, but uh, <laughs> Bournemouth are dead last in the league and expected goals generated. It's just 15.2 in 20 matches, which is just really bad. Uh, Brighton have permitted the six fewest XG, which is 23.9 in 19 matches. So Bournemouth have scored one goal over their last five games, Premier League games. And that came against Nottingham Forest, which is one of the teams near the bottom of the table. Uh, Bournemouth should have a really, really hard time creating clear chances against Brighton. And with that, like kind of circling back to what I said earlier, I don't mind Brighton to win 2-0, which is plus 550, or 3-0, which is plus 850. So I just think Brighton's a much better team, and Bournemouth's going to have a really hard time scoring a goal. Yeah, minus 110, the number on that one for Bournemouth to get shut out. The Brighton versus Bournemouth match on Saturday, as Austin mentioned, uh, for that one. Uh, what makes them so, like, what what inspires the pessimism for you on them? On Bournemouth? Yeah. Uh, well, they're they're just really bad. They're probably going to get relegated. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And Brighton are just a machine right now. They're – try to compare them to, like, an American team like the Rays for mm -hmm. baseball. They just keep selling players, but somehow it just, like, doesn't matter, and they're still good every year, and they just have this, like, assembly line of talent. Yeah. And they're fantastic defensively. So it's just a really bad attacking team playing at a really good offensive team. And, Yeah doesn't have to be super difficult. <laughs> right. And if you want to, like Austin said, if you want to really fade uh, Bournemouth, you can go with the correct score market. 2-0, two, two as he mentioned, is plus 550. 3-0, plus 850 right now for that match over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Anything else you like on Saturday or should we move to Sunday? Nothing much for Saturday, but there are a bunch of games going on at once, and it's yeah a little bit like the 1-7 to seven window for NFL. So if, if you're trying to get into the sport, it's a great time to – to hop in on Saturday afternoons. Do we need Scott Hansen to, you know, warm yeah. the, the pipes again to get back in action here? <laughs> that would be great. Uh, I, I would love that. I think that'd be great. Okay. We do have two matches on Sunday as well. Anything you like in those two games? Um, I like Erling Holland to score for Man City. He's minus 120 to score, and he's kind of gotten to the level of like Messi and Ronaldo and Mbappe, yeah. where anytime he's close to even money, mm -hmm. like we have to be interested just check it out. So he's got 25 goals in 19 league games and he'll be on penalties. <laughs> it's really crazy. And yeah, him being on penalties is a huge uh, thing for anytime goal markets, obviously. So anytime city gets a penalty, he's going to take it and he's probably going to score it. Uh, Tottenham have really struggled defensively of late. They've allowed at least 1.0 XG in seven of their last eight league matches, 15 goals overall in that time, including four, to this Man City team the last time they played. And they've conceded at least twice in six of the last eight games. So I'm expecting City to be able to create a few really good chances and Holland to be uh, on the end of one of those. Yeah, Holland, as you mentioned, minus 120 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's for the Tottenham versus Man City game. If you just go to the popular tab, anytime goal scorer, Holland is minus 120 right there. All right, that's all we got here for today, breaking down the EPL, but Austin... We're going to bring you back because we got to talk more EPL uh, down the line. I need to figure out the sport. So I'm going to lean on you. Going to force you to talk about it. Going to force you to make me better with this. Uh, we'll talk plenty about it and hopefully get some good bets out there as well. But Austin, I appreciate the time for today. Uh, good luck to you, uh, whether it be DFS, betting, whatever it may be for this weekend. And I'll talk to you again soon. Sounds good. Thank you very much. All right. Check out Austin Cass on Twitter at Austin Cass and find his work over at Number Fire it J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Once again, we've got USC and NASCAR and NFL already in the feed over on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Next week coming up, a lot of Super Bowl 57 discussion along with some college basketball. It is going to be a blast. Make sure you are subscribed on your podcast platform of choice. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you once again next week. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 